This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Connor Ben. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. As good as can be. How are you doing? All good, all good. Uh, your beard game's looking strong. No, I've paid enough for it. <laughs> <laughs> we might come on to that a bit later. But, um, <laughs> how's the last sort of few weeks for you in general? And obviously you haven't been in the ring since last October, so... That itself must have been a little bit of a frustrating time. Uh, yeah, it's getting a little bit long now. I mean, uh, it's frustrating. It's been it was frustrating when the fight got called off. So uh, all I can do is just um, stay positive, man, and um, keep working, keep grafting as I've been doing, and it, it will uh, it will pay off. I mean, every time I've had a layoff or had an injury, or um, I've come back better, and I plan on doing exactly the same this time. Eddie Hearn revealed his plans for the summer, which have got people excited again about boxing because obviously we we miss it despite what's going on. Um, what's your thoughts on on that first the matchroom fight camp? Uh, Barry Hearn's big big back garden. Um, it's optimistic, but I suppose when it comes to Eddie Hearn, it, it can be done. I mean, it looks quality. I think if anybody's going to do um, behind closed doors, I think matchroom will be doing it the best. I mean, it looks unbelievable. Uh, but as for me as a fighter, um, I would choose to not fight behind closed doors uh, unless I could get the British and Commonwealth title on the line, um, as I've been made mandatory for that anyway. So um, it's either wait out for Chris Jenkins and Garden to fight, or I fight one of them first and everyone have one of them as a defence. So um, unless that's on the table, um, I'll just see it through. I've got time on my side. I ain't going to rush nothing. It's interesting because I've not spoken to anyone yet that has said kind of what you've just said there that you know you not really favouring fighting behind closed doors. So my pre my my preference. Yeah. Some people I rise to the to the occasion to to the crowd. They spur me on. Um, you know, I think I think if a, a, a lot of, a lot of fights can be a lot harder when you ain't got the crowd there. So um, and I'm in the truth for the British title um, and Commonwealth title anyway. So. I'm just going to wait till the opportunity presents itself. So, obviously, Eddie Hearn's talking about putting together four shows back-to-back, -back, you know, starting from July the 18th, which will end in that period with White and Povetkin. Uh, if you were offered, say, a shot at, um, of going on the white Povetkin card, are you saying that you would just, unless it was for the British and Commonwealth, you would unless just it's for the Yeah, unless it's for the British and Commonwealth title. Um, I'll see it for a listen. It's not like I'm not grafting. I'm not working on things or, um, I mean, I'm working still. So it, me not fighting until whenever the, the shows do happen or until I do get the British and Commonwealth title opportunity when after Jenkins and Garton fight, that's fine. Because I've got time on my side and I'm going to come back better and stronger. There's so many things I can work on, so many things. There's an endless list of things I can do right or do better. Uh, so me having this time, I ain't got to worry about no diet. I ain't got to worry about getting fit. Well, fighting fit. I ain't got to worry about the pressure and media uh, commitments. I can simply just learn behind closed doors and learn and learn and learn and make bad habits become good habits. So um, that's that's my outlook on it. Anyway, I'm not 28, 29, 30, and you know need these fights. I'm I mean young, fresh blood. We don't know when boxing will return in front of a crowd. What if that situation? goes on and on and on. Is there a possibility that you may have to rethink the way you think at the moment if it keeps dragging on? Well, listen, I could, I, I'll think about that when that time comes. That I've got to think about that. At the minute, this is currently how the situation stands in my point of view. My dad's, my dad's not for me fighting on um, behind closed doors whatsoever. Uh, so, um, but I'm saying if the British and Commonwealth title on the line, um, I will fight. And I'm sure if Jenkins and Garton ain't going to fight anytime soon, I'm sure Jenkins is going to want a payday. Or, do you know what I mean? So, um, if Warren ain't, I don't know if Warren's doing behind closed door shows or not, but I'm pretty sure that he'd put Jenkins and Garton on that bill anyway. So, and if not, well, again, we'll have to reconsider when that time comes. Um, as far as I know, Frank Warren is going to make an announcement soon regarding what's going to happen regarding his shows. Obviously, Eddie Hearn's outlined his plan. So, yeah, um, I think we'll know a little bit more this week. Whether Garton and, and Jenkins feature on that, I don't know. But um, it, in your head, it's kind of clear what you want, which is which is a good thing that, yeah. you know, you've kind of weighed out the situation we're in and 
and you're going to do what's best for your career. And that's exactly what it is. I, I, don't, I don't care about nobody else's opinion or, or I, th- I think about what's best for my career. And me having injuries that I've had, I ain't got no injury right now. So I can train full, you know, I can train properly. I ain't got no broken jaw. I ain't got no torn tendon in my hand. I can work on everything. Um, and I'll do what's best for my career. And I think that's what's best for my career uh, moving forward. It ain't about, I ain't, I ain't going to fight for the money. I ain't going to take fights I don't need. I'll fight and I'll fight based on um, what I think is best for my career because I've only got one career. And so I've got to look out for my best interests. And you're, you just said your dad's fully supportive of, of what you're saying and he's in, agreeing mm-hmm. with what you're saying regarding yeah. this as well. Definitely. Definitely. Um, he, we even spoke about it today. Uh, there's no, there's no other, um, this is what we want, the British and Commonwealth title. Um, we were supposed to fight um, Garden last time round, fell through. Um, don't know why it fell through, uh, but it did. And then we got offered Jenkins and we said, yeah, to fight Jenkins back then. So it's more of just a waiting game, really. Uh, but mark my words, when the time comes for me to fight for the British and Commonwealth title, I'll be more than ready. We know you can't spar at the moment, but have you adapted your training during this period? I've been doing some s and I've not been doing no long runs as I've just been dieting um, a little bit just to keep the weight down. Uh, whereas before I used to do the long runs to keep the weight off, whereas now it's just to do short 5K, 6K runs, uh, strength, um, explosive s and and um, just bag work, shadow work with Tony keeping a watchful eye. And my dad, of course. You've missed months at a time during your career. Are you treating that like this situation now no different? It's no different, except I'm injured. That's, that's, that's no different. This is nothing um, new to me. I live out in the sticks anyway. I'm neighbours with Eddie. <laughs> I, live, I live out in the sticks. So um, this, is really, this is nice for me uh, because think, well, Mrs. goes to work. Um, and my dad lives in Australia, or my family lives in Australia, I'm just on my jacks. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's nice to have my missus here as well. You know, I do my night in a little bit, but it's nice <laughs> in a way. And then I've got my dad here as well. So um, this lockdown, I'm, it's, it's nothing new, nothing new at all. So is your, is your dad still, obviously, in, he's in the country, and he's, for the next however long he's going to be here? Uh, he's going to be here for the next two weeks, but he's been here for now four months. He's been living with me. Four months. Madness, trust me. Challenging? <laughs> Challenging? Uh, um, yeah, you can say that. It's, it's just funny because I do play the card a lot. It's, you know, my roof. <laughs> uh, pass the remote. <laughs> It'd be midway for a program. No, pass me the remote. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's, it's, it's jokes, though. Obviously, the last time I saw your dad, um, he was right into his training, etc., and um, kind of his body transformation as well. So, how's that been going for him? He still trains like lunatic. He's been training twice a day, in morning and in the evening, every single day without fail. And Sundays he just trains once, but we've had a, we've had a little bit because he does this all the time, and he's definitely in the I, I'm in the IOU list because he keeps going. Yeah, Con, I'm gonna get my weight down, mate. You know, like, I'm gonna go back, and I've got to be this certain weight. And he never makes the weight. And then he got, it gets to like Friday, Thursday, and he's like, oh, you know, diet starts on a Monday. And it's like, oh, whatever. So we bet a thousand pan. He gets, the, he loses five kilos in two weeks. So I'm gonna be balling in two weeks. <laughs> um, we know your neighbours, as you just said earlier on in this interview, with with Eddie Hearn. Uh, which is actually coincidentally 10 minutes away from me. But do you run into him where you are? <laughs> no, not really. Um, I've seen him maybe a, a few times. Um, he told me to get out of the road because I was walking my dog when I was top on. Got my, got my big dogs walking around his, where I live. And like, he's like, put your top back on. <laughs> oh, it's, it's jokes though, isn't it? I, see, I stick out like a sore thumb in his village, trust me. <laughs> I know the village very well, actually. And, uh... There's not loads to do around there. There's like, uh, but no, forest walks, and that's about it. No, absolutely. Um, so, <clears throat> just moving forward, if you can fight twice this year, would you be happy with that? If if it presents itself, 
um, I prepared myself in my head to um, that there are going to be no fights this year. Um, unless, and I'm, I'm sticking by my guns on it, unless the British and Commonwealth title are on the line, I'm not... Um, I'm not interested in a uh, fight behind, behind closed doors. Some of the sort of fighter that uh, rises to the crowd, and that's just my style. So I'm not going to do anything I think is detrimental to to my career when I don't need to. I don't. It's, I'm not. I'm in the in the current situation I'm in. I've got time as long as I use this time, you know, wisely to better my craft. Well, then nothing can go wrong. There's no such thing as ring rust if you're taking over. In my opinion, I think when I was out for ten months. And I fought uh, Mike Cole at the O2, probably one of my best performances. When I tore my tendon and I come back and fought that Joseph Sandrick at the O2, my best performance. You get that fire, in, you know, like, like that debut feeling. It's, it's like your debut all over again, that nervous, you know, thrill. And so there ain't no such thing as, oh, I'm going to come back and I need to get my time in right and, and all that. It, that'll, that'll come. It'll fall into place. Maybe it's because I'm so young. Uh, I can say this and you know my outlook on ring rust and etc is different to somebody who's 28, 29, 30 mm. but I just got to do what's right for me I do want to actually ask you about your beard I mean I've never met anyone who's had a beard transplant before what what was the thinking behind that Connor? I know you shave yours Coogan I know you've got a proper good beard on, on all there but um, I thought, you know what? It's just nice to have the option. So does it grow normally like a normal beard? What, what's the... Yeah, yeah it's, it, this is only growing for a couple of weeks. So I've had this little bit done, so that's got to grow through. But you get, you get all these people saying, oh, I can't believe you had a beard transplant. You, well, listen, I'm telling you now, if you had the money to have a beard transplant done, you get it done, 100%. You get, you get a bit, every man wants a beard. Every man who ain't got a beard wants a beard. I'm telling you now, Coogan, it's nice to have the option. You're, it's, you're only a real man when you've got a beard. I'll pay for mine. <laughs> well, enough people we know have had hair transplants. Exactly. Spence Oliver, James DeGale, um, Razor Ruddock. Um, Derry Matthews had one. Derry Matthews had one as well. Alfie Price. So the four people who come with, with all this beard now, I'm happy. I like my beard. Just cut out. Just the last ten Hold seconds. On. Cut yeah. out there. Yeah. Oh, that was a good ten seconds. I don't. I can't say off by heart, but it was a good ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hearn's talking about having one by the end of the year. Anyway, not a beard one, but uh, a hair transplant. He's openly said that he wants to have one by by the end of 2020. So you do end up looking. You do end up looking like a little bit funny at first. Like you're. Oh, it's painful and all, mate. Like it's painful. Um. I said to myself, I wouldn't do it again. And then I've, uh, and then I've gone and had this middle bit done. So that's going to start coming through soon. Oh, so you've gone back again to have the middle bit done? Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't really want the middle bit done at first. And then I thought for a more natural look, I'll have the middle bit done. Well, it looks well anyway, so... It's mad though, isn't it? You pay, you pay for what you get, didn't you? So it looks... But it's looks mad though. Like, I've, I've, my whole life I've wanted a beard. And I've got a beard. I woke up overnight. Well, look. There's a beard. Madness. What money can buy? What money who, can buy? Who said money don't, don't buy you happiness? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, as long as it makes you happy, uh, it, it has no effect on anyone else's life apart from your own, so why not? Why not? There you, there you go, Coogan, mate. Um, obviously, in this lockdown period, stories in boxing sometimes run away with itself um, because there's nothing else to talk about. Obviously, there's no concrete fights have been announced yet but a uh, lot of talk over the summer over a potential fight at some point hopefully next year with uh, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua um, have you been kind of keeping tabs on on all this or not really roughly Wilder being paid to step aside yeah which um, doesn't look like he's going to do that it looks like him and what, him, you think he should I think he should mate if he gets a shot uh, the winner it, it, may, it just makes more sense in my opinion, because like, he'll get beat again. And then yeah, that, that's the thing that would have made sense, I suppose, if Wilder had a guaranteed shot of the winner of Fury and uh, and Joshua. But then I suppose they're talking about having two fights. So the whole situation is quite, quite complicated. But you believe that Wilder should just step aside, take the money and 
if he gets a shot, whether it's two fights down the line, if he gets another shot. Because mm. he can, there's so many things he can work on or needs to work on. And the fight with Fury showed that. So I think if he said, all right, yeah, I'll take the 10 mil, I'll step aside. You look, you two fight and you put mileage on your clock and then I'll, I'll have the winner. So that's what I would do if I was him anyway. I mean, it's a 10 mil. It's tasty. Who's your favourite at the moment between Joshua and Fury? Um, um, I don't know. I think Fury, um, based on last performances, I think uh, Fury's just so awkward. And if he can handle someone who's um, as wild as Wilder and take his power, well, I, don't, I think I found the edge in to, towards Fury. Well, if we get to see that fight once, let alone twice next year, then I suppose we're all winning. That'd be quality. If, um, especially when the crowd starts coming back and you can have um, big events and things like that, there'll be some atmosphere in there. There's These events you're talking about that can't possibly happen without a crowd. You know, we're talking about the biggest fights in uh, in the history of British boxing. So, yeah. I mean, whether that fight is to happen in the UK or not, regardless of the pandemic we're in, I don't know. But those fights... What, are they not- saying that it might not happen in the UK? There's a good possibility it doesn't happen in the UK, yeah. Money talks. Listen, these offers come from the Middle East. and maybe, the- Yeah, maybe a second fight in the Middle East. Yeah, that's a big, as said, one of the biggest um, heavyweight fights in British history. And you're telling me that ain't going to be on British soil. Well, I think there's a good chance that it doesn't happen over there because of the money available elsewhere. And that's unfortunate that is the case, but because we'd all want to see that fight take place in this country. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's, not like, it's not like AJ and Fury ain't got enough money. I think it would be doing the British public, you know, the right, the right thing to do would have that fight on British soil, don't you reckon? Okay, so if you were going to earn 50 million for that fight here, Connor, or you were going to go and earn 100 million for that fight in Saudi Arabia or wherever. Bearing talking- in mind, though, bearing in mind, though, that I've already got a few hundred mil in the bank, I'd probably say I'll have it here. That's a good attitude to have, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to that would like, obviously, Joshua and Fury to adapt that attitude. But I think when the figures are in front of them and it's crunch time and it's deciding time, it's, it takes a lot of balls to say, do you know what? No. Fuck yeah, but then they both, they both got to agree as well, though, didn't they? So cool. that's, that's the thing. So, um, you know, they both got to agree. Maybe one is saying, yeah, let, well, let's do it on British soil. Um, and then maybe the other one's going, no, I want, I want an extra 50 million quid. <laughs> so, people, people will cry when that, if that fight doesn't get announced for real. They already, they already had the um, beforehand uh, when um, AJ yeah. fought Ruiz. Exactly. Let alone two British fighters. Exactly. So... Yeah, that's madness. It's crazy. Um, what's your plans for the rest of the week? Plan for the rest of the week. Um, get some more beard oil. <laughs> um, and just stay working, man. Stay working. It's if you do look at it, like you're saying, what's the plans for the week? And it's so, you get so depressed thinking, what's my plans for the week? Like, my plans for the week is the same as last week. <laughs> And it's probably going to be the same for the next next couple few weeks. So um, I try and take each day as it comes and look forward to, to tomorrow or try and just focus on today. Otherwise, you just end up thinking, what is the actual point? I 100% agree with you. I think you can't even plan for, mm-hmm. like I said, if I said to you, what you're up to next week, it makes no difference. It's like a day-to-day thing for everyone. It's like, yeah, you know, everyone. You wouldn't know. If I said to you, what did you do last week? Tuesday or Monday, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what I did last Monday or Tuesday. I was at home. That's it. That's all I could say. I was at home. I couldn't tell you specifically what I did. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So I've just got to um, just take each day as it comes. Otherwise, you can just start going a little bit mad. And because I'm sticking by my guns with what I said about fighting for the British and come off the title, at the minute, it's like. Um, so my dad just got back from walking the dogs. Um, there is. There is. Um, Wait, oh, oh, oh. there is no, <laughs> there is, if I choose to look at it and think, ah, oh, um, I ain't going to be fighting for a while, I've just got to realise that repetition is, is key. So just repetition, repetition of the same boring things in the gym. Just want to finally ask you, obviously, I know it becomes a bit boring me talking about this because we've spoken about it so many times, but 
Do you believe a fight in possibly 2021 will happen with you and Kelly now? Um, I don't know, honestly, mate. Um, who knows when, it, first off, there's going to be a crowd um, when he's got Vanessa in next. It's, it's all just a bit of a mess. Can't, can't, can't really plan anything. I can't even see past tomorrow, let alone yeah. 2021. I, can't even, I don't even really know what I'm doing this year yet. Um, all I know is that I'm going to take each month as it comes. But I think currently for, the, for what is it, the rest of next month and the following month probably, I'm going to stick with my guns unless anything changes. Mm. Or if the Jenkins and Garden fight don't materialise, I'll go out to see my family in Australia. Um, I've been speaking with Billy Dibb out there. I know Gabos is out there. Um, I can do, I can train with him. I was speaking with Billy Dibb about sparring. And Combosis and, and all them fighters out there that I can train with this and see my family because I won't get this time back again. So if, the, if they, I'll find out whether today or tomorrow, I haven't heard nothing today or tomorrow about fighting um, Jenkins. So and if the fight can't be made um, soon, then I'll go to Australia and see my family. It is all up in the air, and like I said, all you could do is literally take day by day and, and, and hope for the best, basically. That's all we can do at the moment, or you can do at the moment. Well, yeah, but I'm a, I'm a resident there, by the way, um, in Australia. So I can, I'll have to be on quarantine over there at the airport for two weeks, and then quarantine coming back for two weeks. Uh, but either way, I can still get out of there. Mm. Okay, well, Connor, listen, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. I uh, appreciate you talking to IFL TV. Good to catch up and, uh, yeah, keep yourself safe. Send our regards Thank to you your dad. And, Thank uh, you, I will do. Hopefully, we'll speak soon. All right, brilliant, Cougar, mate. All right? All right, take care, buddy. Stop, man. Thank you, mate.